convicted killer might be set free in a Southland murder case that dates all the way back 30 years. Governor Jerry Brown has ordered new DNA testing for death row inmate Kevin Cooper, and the move is getting rave reviews from a reality TV superstar. KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan has the details and the reaction. Dave? Sharon, this controversy has been going on for at least yeah. two decades, and it's still continuing tonight. Kevin Cooper says the new DNA testing will prove that he was framed for the 1983 Chino Hills hatchet and knife killings of four people. But prosecutors say previous DNA DNA tests have disproven Cooper's claims of innocence. Cooper and his attorney argue the evidence against him was planted. And so Governor Brown tonight stepped right into the middle of that argument, saying he takes no position on Cooper's guilt or innocence, but only wants to get the truth. Two weeks before leaving office, Governor Jerry Brown tonight has issued an executive order directing DNA testing be carried out in one of the most shocking and brutal murder cases in Southern California history. The victims of the brutal, bloody 1983 murders were Doug and Peggy Ryan, their 10-year-old daughter, and her 11-year-old friend. The blood-stained walls of their home in the Chino Hill section of San Bernardino County, a shocking remnant of the violent attack. They were killed with a hatchet and at least two other weapons. They had more than 150 wounds on their bodies. Only the Ryan's 8-year-old son Joshua survived the attack despite a slashed throat and a skull fracture. He told police he thought three men had carried out the attack, but only one man, Kevin Cooper, was arrested. He was a convicted burglar who escaped from a minimum security prison and was using the house next door as a hiding place. He claimed he was innocent, but a drop of blood, which authorities said was his, and a bloody shoe print led to his conviction. And he has been in prison now for more than 30 years. But by 2001, serious questions were being raised about some of that evidence. Somebody discovered the footprint in the, in the crime lab, but nobody saw it at the house, and all of the crime scene photographs that were taken by the police photographers didn't show any such shoe print. 17 years ago, the state agreed to do new tests on some of the evidence in Cooper's case, including the blood drop, strands of blonde hair clutched in one victim's hand, a stained T-shirt found near the scene, and cigarette butts that were dropped in the Ryan stolen station wagon. But the results did not clear Cooper. Now, Cooper's attorney believes new DNA technology will change that. It's possible now to determine who was wearing that T-shirt at the time of the murders. And uh, we're very hopeful that with the state-of-the-art technology that we'll be able to determine who actually was wearing the shirt and therefore who it was who killed the Ryan family and Christopher Hughes. This case is absolutely at the top of the list in terms of the most corrupt, botched, wrongfully handled case cases that I've ever seen or dealt with or been involved in the investigation of. Former FBI special agent in charge Thomas R. Parker spent 30 years with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and served essentially as the assistant chief of the FBI Los Angeles Regional Office. He believes San Bernardino Sheriff's Department personnel planted some evidence and disregarded other evidence in order to get a false conviction of Kevin Cooper. And Parker is not alone. Here's what Judge William Fletcher from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said about the Cooper conviction. He is on death row because the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department framed him. You don't expect this in California. In May of this year, New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof raised questions about the case as well. And we did a full report on the controversial case on KCAL 9 and CBS 2 News as well and asked Governor Brown's office if the governor was going to order additional DNA testing on the T-shirt and other garments associated with the murders. Now, seven months later, the answer is yes. It, it is a wonderful Christmas present for Kevin Cooper and for all of us who have been working so hard to exonerate him. So we're pleased that we finally are going to get a chance to prove our client is innocent. And we're hopeful that all the testing can be done quickly and that he can be exonerated. Governor Brown's spokesman wrote in an email that after requesting additional information from Mr. Cooper's legal counsel and the San Bernardino County District Attorney's Office earlier this year and thoroughly reviewing what was provided in recent months, Governor Brown is directing limited retesting of certain physical evidence in the case and appointing a retired judge as a special master to oversee this testing, its scope and protocols. 
Among Cooper's supporters are reality TV star Kim Kardashian, who also called for Governor Brown to order new DNA tests. After getting the news, she tweeted, just saw the press release from Governor Brown regarding Kevin Cooper. Such amazing news. So the bottom line is tonight, there was enough evidence to raise questions that the governor feels must be answered with the DNA tests he's ordering. But right now, this is not a pardon and it's not a commutation of Mr. Cooper's prison sentence, although his supporters, of course, are hoping that these tests will prove his innocence and lead to his release from prison. Sharon? But this case isn't the only case that the, gov that the governor has stepped in to, to intercede. This was the only executive order, but there were some other things going on as well. In fact, the governor issued 140 three pardons and 131 wow. commutations on this Christmas Eve. Among them are pardons for five refugees from Cambodia and another immigrant from Honduras, all of whom faced possible deportation because of their criminal convictions. And also among those receiving pardons today were Louis Honig, a former state superintendent of public instruction for California, who was convicted in the 1990s on conflict of interest charges. And also on that list are two people from Paradise in Northern California, where the recent devastating wildfires destroyed their homes. Right. Sharon, back to you. Dave, thank you.